Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So in this video here, we're going to talk about the consensus stages in V7. I'm going to show you how we can set them up so we can actually like compare annotations from, for example, like humans and also models. We can have like pre-trained models labeling our data set automatically. We can compare that in the consensus stages with human labelers. So this can actually like increase the accuracy of our data set and therefore also our machine learning models. So this is an essential tool in your machine learning pipeline and annotation workflow. We're basically going to create a work from scratch i'm going to show you how we can use these consensus stages and they are really useful especially when you're working with for example like medical images or if you just want to have your data set labeled in the best possible way and it can also save you time and money over time by using these consensus stages because then you don't have to do that many revisions of your data and you can also like use models to actually label and automatically label your data set compared with the human so they don't need to like put in that much effort um, and then you can further, further to review stages later on. But let's now jump into it and see how we can use the consensus stages with V7. So let's now jump into the workflows. We're going to create a workflow from scratch. First of all, we're going to take our own custom data set connected to our workflow. We have these different stages over here to the right. In this video here, we're going to use the consensus stage to actually like have two annotators for our data set. So then we can actually like set up a battle against two annotators. It could also be an AI model. So if you're trained an AI model here with V7, I have a video about that, how you can do that. Then you can actually like use that AI model to go in, label your data set. Then you can also have additional human labelers. And then you can have these consensus stages comparing the annotations from uh, both like to human labelers, but also an AI model labeler and a human labeler. Then it will go in and compare the annotations from the human labeler and also the model. It will go in and look at the intersection over union if we're, for example, working with bounding boxes or segmentation mask for your data set. And this one here, I'm going to show you how we can do it, how we can set up the different kind of like scenarios for our consensus stages and what are we going to do after our consensus state. But at first here, let's just start with connecting our data set. So I'll just scroll down. We have this cup, uh, cup detection data set. I'm just going to confirm that and connect it. Here we just have like 10 files. So I've just uploaded 10 files from that data set. I have, to, I have used this data set before on my YouTube channel, both for segmentation tasks, my courses, object detection, and all those different kind of things. So it's pretty good to see how it actually works. I've also used it uh, together with some other labeling tools. So basically just to make a comparison and see how easy it is with V7. How we can go in and label them, set up these annotation states here, uh, the workflows and all those different kind of things. So now we have our data set connected. First of all, we just have our basic workflow here. We're just going to delete some of those. So right now we don't want to like annotate them in the first stage here. Uh, we're basically going to set up the consensus stage. So we're just going to drag it in here. Now we have our data set. First of all, we can like further to uh, a labeling stage, consensus stage or like whatever we want to do. But here we're going to take a look at the consensus stage. Over here to the right, we can now see the different kind of like information about our consensus state. So in general here, we're looking at intersection over union for our bounding boxes or polygons. If the intersection over union is greater than some threshold, we can set the threshold here, which is now 80%. Then if it's greater than 80%, then we will act like throw them through the agreement in the consensus stage. And then we, we act like agree from our two labelers, or you can have like multiple uh, stages. You can add an arbitrary number. So if our human labelers if we have like, for example, two, we want to have as good data set as possible. And we want to make sure that the data that we throw into our model is actually labeled in the correct way. Then we can use these consensus stages here to make sure that we have the best possible data for our model. So this is a really useful tool when you're working with data sets and machine learning workflows. So just connect it here from our data set to our consensus stage. And then after that, we can go in at review stages, other annotation states, we can throw them through webhooks and so on. So if we agree or like if we disagree in our consensus state, let's say we have two human labelers, we can throw it through a review stage or we can just directly throw it through a webhook. I already have a video about that. We basically just have the webhook over here to the right. If they succeed here, so we basically just throw it in. If it succeeds, going through the webhook, um, then we can just like throw the image through a review stage or we can just like discard it or whatever we want to do. But the idea behind this webhook is that we basically just want to send, for example, a notification. We can set it up with a Slack channel as I did in the other videos. So I have a whole playlist with V7 videos where we go over like all the features, all the individual stages over here to the right. So you can actually like learn how to use V7 from scratch, going over all the stages. How can you train your own model? How can you create, generate these workflows? annotate the images we can even have like video labels um, as well so you can actually like label like whole videos here in v7 they have frame interpolation and and so many cool things so we have already covered that make sure to check those videos out 
it's a really cool tool and it it is really useful when you're building like a large machine learning workflows and also pipelines and if you just want to get like the best data possible and you're working with a larger team so right now we have our consensus stage let's just go over here and add another stage right now i don't have a model already trained on this data set so we're just going to add like have two human labelers we could actually just go and use the model here. I have also shown you guys how we can connect our data set directly to a model. And this is kind of like the same scenario. So we could actually just go in here at another model. If we had, for example, an AI model, we had it had it for like the two seg segmentation model. So you can use that basically just for your data set through the AI model, for it through the view stage. If it gets accepted in the view stage into the complete data set, then you actually have an active um, learning or like an active um, labeling pipeline. If they're discarded, go into a human labeler, correct the mistakes that the AI model did, and then enter a new review stage into the complete data set. So that is basically like the idea behind that. So let's not just use the consensus stage. I'm going to see how we can set up these different stages. So we're going to choose two uh, human labelers. I'm just going to add two here at the same time. The first one here, we're going to assign that to Amina. So she's going to be the first labeler. And then I'm going to assign the second one here to myself. You can also choose like all the other team members that you have on your team. You can set up like multiple stages and so on. You can also have multiple annotators in each stage or like in each annotation stage here. So right now we have the two uh, annotators here in our consensus state. So this is basically a battle uh, between me and Amina when we're going to label our data set. If we agree, if the intersection over union is greater than 80%, then we're actually like agreeing in our consensus stage and we can throw it directly into our complete stage. So let's just do that. We're just going to do some rearrangement of our other stages here. So if we agree here, we're just going to throw them directly into our complete data set. I'm just going to delete this one here. If we disagree, we can throw them into a webhook as we already like talked about. So we can basically just like throw it into a webhook. Um, right now, we're just going to throw it into a review stage. So here, again, we're going to review them. Why are we actually like disagreeing? We can then assign it to another labeling team, or you can just directly have an annotation state here after the review stage, but let's now just add an annotation state. So here, if they're rejected, maybe it's because the images are not good enough. We could maybe have just an archive here. If, for example, the images are not good enough, we can just directly throw them into our archive state. And then after review stage here, if they're accepted in the review stage, we throw it into another annotation state, and then we can act like have another labeler here. You can choose another labeler from uh, your acts like team doing this annotation here before we throw it into a new review stage. So let's just do that. Then we're just going to assign it here. If they're rejected in, in the second review stage here, again, we're just going to archive our data. If it's accepted, we throw it into the complete data set up here. And now we can see that we have built a whole machine learning workflow. Wherever we connect our data set, throw it through your consensus stage to start with. Again, we could also have like an AI model, but right now we have two human labelers. So now we can actually just save and apply a workflow and get started with labeling our data set, throw them into a consensus state, and then see how the workflow works. So now we can basically just go in and annotate our classes here. Then I'm going to annotate the images and then Amina is going to annotate them as well. If they agree here on the acts like detections, then we can throw them into our complete data set. So here I'm just going to use the auto annotation tool. We're just going to go up and select the class. So we're going to detect a cup here. Amina is probably going to do the same. So again, all the images will just go through the consensus stage because the intersection over union will be greater than 80%. And this is also one of the cool tools about V7. Like you just saw how easy it was to actually like auto annotate these images. And then we can basically just like run through all the, all the images here. When I'm done annotating the cup, I'm going to send it to the consensus and then Amina will do the exact same thing. And again, it will go through consensus stage, be rejected or accepted. So here we can see that I'm annotating like all the images. This is exact same scenario. So we're basically just going to do that. So this image here is all weighted to Amina. I'm just going to go back here. We have like five marks. Again, I'm just going to use the auto annotation tool. So let's just draw a bounding box around it. Pretty nice detection as well. So sometimes it detects the cup handle, sometimes it does not. But again, it will be pretty consistent for all these scenarios when we're using these annotation tools or like these auto annotation tools. Again, here we can see that it basically just draws this really nice like polygon around uh, the occluded part of the cup as well. Again, pretty nice. You can just see like how fast I'm annotating these images. When I was using other tools that didn't have this auto annotation tool, I would basically have to like sit here and click for all of the individual points around the cup. Let's throw it to consensus. The next one, we'll go back. Here we have five more. So let's just take a couple more. I'm just going to speed up here a bit so you guys can see like how fast you can actually like annotate these images. 
even though I choose like a large area, it should still be able to catch it pretty nicely. And it does. Let's just go back, take another one here. It's a bit more blurry. So let's try that out. Could be pretty interesting. So still pretty nice detection, even though this image here is pretty blurred. I'm just going to take a larger zone. Pretty nice detection. Let's try an even larger zone. Here we can see that we get some false predictions, but now we can actually just go up here and click and then it will delete this part. We can do the exact same thing here. And now we actually have a pretty nice bounding box around it as well. So let's just go down here, take this one here, add this one, add the bottom part. And again, you can just see how easy it is to go in and annotate these images through all the data set, through all the images, through our data set here in your consensus stage. I mean, we'll do the same thing. And then after that, we basically have our data set it is going to go through the whole consensus state. It's going to go into complete data set. But again, if you have a more complex data set, if you're not using like the auto annotation tool, or maybe you have an AI model. So this is also a pretty good situation for an AI model. Let's say you have a really large data set, take a subset of that data set, train a model on it here in V7, deploy the model, just connect it directly into the AI model stage or into the consensus state, connect the model, and then have a human labeler label the exact same images together with the model. Or you can just directly have an AI model labeling the data set, connect the data set to the AI model, and then make sure that you have a view stage before you throw it into your data set. So this is actually like a really good way to automate your workflow and also automate your whole annotation pipeline. So again, as I say, when we're working with these machine learning models and data sets, trash in is also trash out. So we need to make sure that we have the best possible data sets for our machine learning models. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification on the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. Definitely some nice cool features from V7. We're basically just combining like all the stages and features. Now I have a whole playlist where we go over the workflows, um, how we can set up webhooks, connect them with different review stages, uh, base them on consensus stages. We also have something called a logic state. So if you're interested in all those features, I'll link to the playlist up here or else I'll see you next video guys. Bye for now.